starting. All attendees are in listen only <coughs> mode. Hello and welcome to our webinar. We're going to do a quick sound check um, just to make sure at this point everyone should hear us from our location. And Joyce, could you say just hello from yours just so that... Oh, okay. We're, we're in good shape then. Um, please let us know in the question box if, if you're having problems or now is the time to adjust your computer. Welcome to Backing Basics. Your backing choice can actually make or break your next embroidery project. Um, we are going to try today to introduce you to a lot of product and to explain the differences. My name is Alice Wolf. I'm Madeira's Manager of Education and Publications. I'm joined here at headquarters by Nancy Minnie. Nancy is Madeira's Senior Marketing Specialist and the backing expert of our Easy Backing and Topping Division. And we are honored to have Joyce Jagger, the embroidery coach, join us remotely in order to share her expertise with you. Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. You are welcome. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Everyone should have a, a dashboard on their uh, computer screen. Up at the top is a red arrow pointing off to the right. If you click on that, you'll get rid of the dashboard if you don't want to see it. You're also going to see a list on there of handouts. Um, depending on how you want to do it, you can either download the handouts at any time or you can wait till the end of the, of the webinar and you will get a, um, a link to make it a little bit easier. Or if you want to download them now as we're talking, if that's up to you. Um, we have a lot of information to share with you today, including um, many free charts. Um, these were put together by Nancy, by Joyce, and they're intended to summarize a lot of what you're going to be learning today. So um, please be patient with us. Go, let's get through the whole webinar and you'll see those turn up. Um, please feel free at any time to type in and submit your questions. We will answer as many as possible in real time during the webinar. But we'll also, as we always do, we'll collect them all and send out the full collection of answers to your questions to everyone who is registered. Uh, we are recording the webinar. We will have a link for the recorded version as well as a printable version for those of you that would prefer to have um, a printout of the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So please stick with us to the end, um, also to see specials that are going to be offered by Joyce and by Madeira's Easy Backing and Topping. So uh, let's get jump right in. Um, Joyce, would you give us a, a quick review of the basics? Well, let's begin with a <coughs> review of the basics. Now, why do we use any backing at all? Backing stabilizes the fabric we are embroidering. It allows the garment to glide smoothly on the needle plate and has smooth movement to keep the registration of the design in place and always use a backing for best embroidery results. Now I have heard from techs that say you do not need the backing on caps. Trust me, you need a backing on caps. Your registration will be more accurate and you are going to get a better finished design when you do. Um, so fabrics play a major role when you're choosing that backing and we've got a couple of charts here to try and help you out in the, that instance because there are some people out there, um, you know, what are the differences in the two different types of um, fabrics themselves. You have knit materials and you have woven materials and why does it matter um, which type of fabric it is based on how what you choose for your backing. Um, we've got a couple, that graph on the right, lower right hand side shows the difference between the two materials themselves. A knit material is actually a continuous string or thread or yarn that is interwoven into itself um, and knit, just much like you would knit a sweater, a blanket, or whatnot. Um, because it's knit and it's just intertwined like that, it doesn't matter which way you pull on it, it's going to be stretchy. And stretchy fabrics are not stable. Um, on the right hand side you have a woven material. A woven material is very similar to a basket weave, uh, whereas the threads are, um, they go back and forth, up and down and across and they intertwine much like a basket weave itself. Uh, because, of, because they're not a continuous string, um, when you go to pull on those, 
it doesn't stretch very much, very, um, very little to no stretch to that type of a fabric. Unless they throw in some like lycra type material in there, it's not going to be stretchy. Um, so if it's not stretchy, then it's a stable fabric. Today we're going to be showing you all the different backings that are available. And there are a lot of them, but they do break down into two different types. Um, in general, it, there's either going to be a cutaway backing or you're going to choose a tearaway backing. And for cutaway backings, you want to use those for the unstable or stretchy fabrics. And for the tearaway backings, you want to use those for the stable or non-stretchy fabrics. Um, just a couple of basic guides there to help you understand backings and materials and how they intertwine with each other. Now, I have found that many new embroiders do not know the difference between a knit garment and a woven garment. So I created this knit backing guide to make it easy for you to be able to instantly see what a knit garment would look like. I've also added what backings to use and how many layers to use to make it easy when you are training a new operator. Now this is the same type of a guide, but it is for woven fabrics. And you can easily see what type of a garment is a woven fabric. And, and both of these guides are going to be available to you as a download. Uh, when you create, excuse me, when you get your Q&A, um, excuse me, when you are sent your answers to your questions in an email, you're going to get a link to these guides. And you can also download them at any time from your control panel. So there are other factors to consider when you are choosing your back. And we've talked, talked about the fabrics. And Joyce's charts there are a great um, guide to help you pick those backings. But then you also have to consider the designs themselves when you're choosing uh, lightweight, heavyweight, or even a medium weight um, backings. And those are all available along with the specialty backings as well. We've got a few designs up here um, kind of showing some different types of designs. If you look at the couple that's over on the right hand side, um, that's a very um, high stitch count design. The whole thing is, is pretty much filled along with the details that are on there. So the density is high, the stitch count's high, um, done on a pretty heavy um, weight fabric, but you also want to make sure you're matching up the backing to a real big design like that. So a heavier weight um, backing is going to be necessary for that particular design. If you look over on the right hand side, there's a couple of um, stitch outs that, of ladies' faces. And those designs on the opposite side, while they're quite large, the designs themselves, the type of designs they are, are open and airy. So there's not a lot of dense areas where there's a lot of fill. Um, so there's less stitch counts when it comes to that design. So you might not need as heavy of a backing to use on those designs. So when it comes to the stitch length, um, short stitches need a little more heavy of a backing to support it. The stitch density, the size of the design, um, those are going to um, determine what weights you're going to need for, the, um, for that particular job that you're working on. When it comes to the color of the material, um, if it's a dark material, um, especially if it's black, there is black backing that's available. Um, sometimes it's not necessary. Maybe it's going to be torn all the way. There's not going to be anything left there. But if you're going to see any of the backing and it's going to be visible from time to time, or you just want to have a cleaner look on the back side, black backings are available in many of the backings um, types that are there. And last but not least, the type of garment may um, make you choose a different backing. Um, for that as well. So if you're going to see the back side of it, maybe you want to make sure you're using a tearaway in order for it to look clean on the back side. Now speaking of the design of the size of the design, if you look at the couple on the far right, it is very, very dense. Now I had a contract with a large company that with a design that had 135,000 stitches in it. Now we embroidered that on the back of a Dickies woven shirt. And it wasn't a heavyweight shirt, it was a sort of a medium weight shirt. And I used a very heavy weight, actually it was a three ounce tearaway, and it worked really, really well. Um, 
even after it was laundered, there were no puckers or pulls, and it just came out beautiful. And it, this three ounce backing is the same thing that we use for caps. However, we ordered it on a roll instead of the cut piece like you do for a cap. Um, so there are so many backings to choose from, and that is actually the reason why we're having this webinar today for you. Um, here you have a list of the backings that are available. I kind of put them in for um, buckets, per se, um, just so that it can kind of simplify the backings that are out there. The basic tearaway and the basic cutaway backings are the backings that you, you are probably introduced to first. Um, they're the um, smooth-looking, kind of consistent, um, feel non-woven backings that are available um, and that you might use on a regular basis. In addition to the basic backings, you have specialty backings. And those, again, are going to break down into your cutaway and your tearaway backings. And those could be your washaway backings, your stick-on backings, your badge master, uh, um, web long no-show products. That, and we're going to get into these products in detail and what they, what they look like, what they're made for, and how they can help you with your embroidery um, projects that you have going on. So maybe you're having some issues with something. Uh, most likely you're going to find something here to help you out with that. Um, in addition to backings, you got your toppings. So the Easy Aqua Supreme is a water-soluble topping that is used. Uh, maybe you haven't used those yet. We're going to show you what those are for and what you can accomplish with that product as well. <coughs> Last but not least, you got your backing finishers. And those are actually applied to the underside of a garment after the embroidery is done. So it, in effect, finishes it off on the back side. So that could be done um, for comfort, um, it, or it could be done to make it actually just look nice on the back side. So looks a little haphazardly here. We've got a real nice chart at the beginning. It's also available as a downloadable um, handout on your dashboard. And feel free to take a look at that in a more organized way. But we're going to go through each and every one of these guys um, just to help you have a better understanding of what, what's out there and what might help you accomplish your projects. I'm going to interrupt uh, just for one question. Joyce, I'm going to direct this question to you because I think it's a kind of a business bottom line oriented question um, that came in from someone. Would it be more cost effective to use one piece of heavier backing rather than doubling up and using two pieces? I normally recommend using two pieces of a lighter, uh, lighter or a medium weight rather than a heavy weight. Uh, it seems to give you a better registration. Okay, so it's not just the cost that's involved, but the um, the actual attributes and the operation of the two pieces. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Now, on unstable fabrics like knits, use a cutaway back. It is also available for garments that are worn next to the skin. And you've got high density designs, large designs, and loosely woven designs. However, not just any cutaway fabric will can be used on the loosely woven designs, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. You also have lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight backing. And I have found that if you are on a tight budget, the medium weight will work for most situations. You can always double up if you have to, and it works just fine. Now, on the unstable, on the unstable woven fabrics, use a tearaway backing. Woven fabrics are cotton twills, denim, and canvas, along with many other fabrics. And if you look back at the woven fabric chart that I created for you, you will see that there are many other different uh, garments that are also um, woven fabrics. Now you also have a choice of lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight backings for these. And speaking of the different weights, again, I generally will use a medium weight Chris tearaway for most of my woven applications. Now wouldn't it be great if the different weights and sizes of cutaways and tearaway were your only choices? Now let's take a look at some of the other specialty backings, toppings, and finishers and their specific uses. 
Now you've got the poly mesh cutaway. This prevents um, show through on white and lightweight knit or light colored fabrics. It's recommended for use with designs with narrow columns of point and it's generally used with a layer of lightweight tearaway. Now the Weblon no-show cutaway, this is soft and sheer and this presents that or prevents that badge effect that occurs when you are using too much backing. Now this is also used with a layer of lightweight crisp tearaway. That helps with the little tiny detail of the small lettering. It helps it to stay crisp and sharp. Um, so here we actually have, in addition to the web line that was on the page before, that that one is um, available, or I should say is great for performance wear as well. So not only is web line great for the performance wear, we brought in another product that is um, great for performance wear as well. Um, hence the name Easy Cut Performance. It is a woven cutaway backing. Uh, that we brought in just about a month or so ago, and it has just had great reviews on it. Sent, uh, we sent Joy some as well, and she tried it out. And Joy, I'm hoping that you'll share your experience with the um, performance cutaway backing. I loved it. This was one of the um, best backings that I have ever used for the performance wear. And it looks like a very thin piece of cotton fabric. I was really surprised when I first saw it, but it's it actually is a polyester and it works really well with performance wear. You, know, you may be embroidering on performance wear for your local police department or fire department. Now they wear a lot of their types of items for their casual wear and they usually have pretty um, high density designs and this backing will hold up well with them and it prevents the design from puckering up. Now, I have found that it's working great on many of the different types of performance wear because you've got, you know, there isn't just one type. You've got a lot of different weights and textures and even stretchiness, and it is really working great for this. And it's, like I said, it's very lightweight, so you can't see through it on your lightweight fabrics, and it holds up to the, very well to the high stitch count designs. Like I said, I love it. Um, thanks, Joyce. There, there's been a couple of people writing in, what is the badge effect? And I wanted to let you know we're going to cover that in a couple of slides coming up here. Um, but in general terms, the badge effect is actually when you can you use too heavy of a backing on a lightweight fabric and you can see the backing behind it. Um, when it comes to these low profile backings, the Easy Web Law No Show from the slide before and this particular one here, um, there's such a low profile um, backing that you're not getting any kind of bulk behind it. Um, so it prevents that badge effect. Um, nobody wants to see the outline of the backing behind the design itself. And so many of the fabrics nowadays are such lightweight, um, not just the performance wear of polyester um, fabrics that are out there, but you get your lightweight t-shirts. Um, and such that can be effective as well. So this brand new product, again, is a woven cutaway product uh, backing. And that's important to know because it gives you some real nice stability when it comes to the performance wear. Um, I per personally like this product and the Web Well No Show as well when it comes to the performance wear. Um, this design, this particular product is going to support designs up to about 8,000 stitches. You can use two pieces if necessary for those higher um, or the larger or high stitch count designs. However, when it comes to lightweight fabrics you go, um, you, themselves, you want to be sure that the fabric can support the design. So, you know, you can't be putting 135,000 stitch design on a lightweight performance t-shirt or performance wear shirt, shirt itself. So. Um, but a great product all around. So sometimes the back side of the embroidery can actually be seen and there's some backing um, stabilizers that are available, a couple of different ones we're going to talk about here and we have some other ones coming up as well. When it comes to doing things like standalone lace or if you're embroidering on something very lightweight uh, with delicate designs that don't need a lot of support, a cutaway wash away 
bathing is the way to go. Um, you can see the flowers here that were embroidered out. They were standalone lace um, design. It was digitized specifically for that. So it pulled itself together once the backing was washed away. Um, so it's a very lightweight backing. It is going to wash away. Um, so you really don't want to be using this for anything that needs a lot of stability throughout the life of the garment. Um, however, it works well um, for washing away. You can literally put this backing in water and it's going to disappear right before your eyes. The Cutaway Wash Away Plus is actually the same product, so it's the same backing. However, they put a pressure sensitive adhesive on one side and they cover that with a release paper. So now you have a stick on Cutaway Wash Away backing. And that's great for garments, um, or I should say fabrics that have a lot of stretch in them, or that actually stretch when you wear them. So the yoga wear that you're seeing on this lady here, think about your bathing suits your bicycle shorts, those are all products that you might want to stretch just slightly when you when you embroider on them so that when they're worn on the person afterwards that design looks really nice. Um, somebody asked about what is a good starter collection of back and we've actually got a couple of bundles at the end of the presentation that I think that you'll find that they're a great um, set up for you when it comes to the backings. Um, if you're brand new to the industry or maybe you're just brand new to the easy backing and topping line of products. So um, it's available also on the handout. So if you want to take a peek over there as you're um, watching us and listening, it's there as well. Um, so another specialty cutaway product is our easy flame resistant web on mesh. This backing is specifically um, used along with your fire-resistant thread and your fire-resistant bobbins. Um, so you would only use this backing and those threads and bobbins along with um, the embroidery done on safety garments. So when it comes to auto racing, firefighting, um, transportation, aeronautics, um, energy, and anywhere a, a worker per se is going to be, could be, um, exposed to fire, they're wearing safety garment in order to prevent them from catching fire. So when you're adding embellishments such as embroidery, you want to make sure you're using everything um, that is flame resistant as well. So the backing um, here is available and we offer the whole package when it comes to the firefighter thread and the firefighter bobbins as well. Um, all Madeira products and the easy backing and topping combined are going to give you what you need. Well, I wish that I had this product when I was embroidering on so many fire suits. This was a weekly thing that we had to do, and I used to use another layer of Nomex fabric for the backing, and it was really quite heavy, and this would have been so much better. I'm, I'm just totally amazed. Now here is the easy applique magic. Now this backing, it, it has a pressure sensitive adhesive on one side and heat activated on the other side. And it's used for applying appliques. Now what I used to have to do in the past was to take a piece of fabric that I wanted to use for an applique, press on a piece of heat seal backing that I had purchased from the local uh, fabric store and sometimes they call it a welding film. And I first uh, I pressed it on, then I had to print out my pattern, cut out my design, spray the back with, of the design with spray adhesive, and then lay it on the garment. Now with this easy applique magic, I'm eliminating two of the steps in the process. And I do not have to use any applique adhesive at all already applied to the back and it is a huge time saver as well as a lot less messy. It's a great product. Now there are more specialty backings developed as problem solvers for specific embroidery applications such as the Easy Cap Tearaway. Now, this maintains the tension when embroidering on caps 
and it results in a clean, crisp design. And you've heard me say that you don't need, you always need to have backing on your caps. I have found that the three ounce heavyweight is the best one um, for me, and it really works great. Now, sometimes on the unstructured caps, you'll need new, two layers. And I have a couple more little tips here to give to you. If you want, if you will press, and I'm talking about steam pressing with a simple steam iron, the front of your caps before hooping them, you press the cap flat. And what happens here is it fits against the um, plate of the machine just perfect. And you don't get that flagging as it's embroidering. And it's especially important if you're using and you're working on the heavy flex fit caps. It absolutely works wonders. Can and I, also when you're... I'm sorry, I, I, I thought I, I caught you. Um, I didn't mean to stop you mid-sentence. There were a couple questions that came in specifically regarding caps. Um, you've answered some of them. Uh, first was all types of caps need backing. You have stressed that. Um, structured and non-structured? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and like I said, sometimes the unstructured, you'll need two layers. But all of the structured caps, every cap out there needs backing. And what about, um, what would you use for that, the caps with the mesh backs? Mesh backing? Um, I've always used the regular heavyweight cap backing. Okay. However, the ones with the, with the, the mesh uh, fabric on the front, I will also use a topping. That helps. And if you're embroidering uh, 3D embroidery or with puff foam on the, on the front of the cap? Three ounce heavyweight backing. Okay. <laughs> Seems pretty simple with, of all the choices that there are, there's two choices here, two and a half and three ounce. Okay. Well, sure. um, so Joyce, when it comes to the designs, can you explain a little bit more about that when it comes to caps? Oh, absolutely. The, when you're creating your designs for your caps, they are to be embroidered from the bottom up center out. Always, always, always. Don't try to use a left chest design on a cap. You're going to get a much better result. You're going to get less pushing. It's just going to come out much, much better if you use a design that is embroidered uh, strictly for a cap. Right. And now, that also, okay, go ahead. I was just going to say that that helps with your registration. It helps prevent the oh. flagging and stuff like that. Maybe explaining flagging would be a good thing as well. Flagging is when your cap bounces up and down when you, when you are embroidering on it. And if it's doing that, then it's not seated flat enough against the plate of the machine. And like I said earlier, if, you, if you'll just take a, like a hand towel and lay it over, the, over your uh, cap hooper and then pull your cap up over that hand towel and then just take a steam iron and just steam it. That softens up that, that, that um, buckram that they put on the inside of the caps and it just presses that flat and it just totally fits against the bed of the machine. And I can even embroider my flex fit caps with a size 10 needle. That's pretty impressive. Um, now you also want to use sharp needles on your caps. Yeah. Not ball points. I so, wanted to... Um, not, not here, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, for sure. <laughs> when it comes to back, uh, the tear of cap backings, they are a heavyweight tearaway backing, so two and a half ounce or three ounce um, backings work well. Um, you can use a couple of the two and a half ounce if you're looking for a little more stability. Um, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to remind you out there, you know, they, they come four, four and a half inches wide um, to kind of cover them, the people that need that, but don't hesitate to trim it down um, so it fits your cap frame as well. So sometimes having a little less backing on your cap frame and using the tips that Joyce has given you about steaming the cap so it helps lay it down a little better for you because that's what you need to do. You need to really hold that product still while it's <laughs> embroidering. Um, keep in mind that trimming your backing 
back a little bit, the width of it can actually make a big difference as well when needed. Joyce? Yeah, I've got, I've got one more little tip here on um, about working with the caps. If, if you will walk your machine when you first start, you're going to prevent needle breaks and thread breaks. Now, now what do I mean by walking your machine? When you first start, you want to hold your finger down on the start button and just hold it there until it embroiders, oh, 10, 12 stitches somewhere in that neighborhood and it's getting past that real thick center part of the cap. You'll be amazed how much better it works. Joyce, does a cap heat press do the same thing as the steam iron? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> I've tried that many times. Now, um, uh, people, they, they think that it's going to be faster, but it does not lay as nice as it does. And sometimes it even makes extra marks on the cap, on the bill of the cap. So, so you just have to be careful with that. You need the actual right. moisture that's going to go into the cap yeah. from the steam in order for it to soften up. Yeah. yeah. And you, it's, it's not like you're, you don't have to apply a lot of pressure. And you, it doesn't take a whole lot of time either. What about you a just garment steamer? Right? Iron over a couple of times, and it's it's done. Um, someone wrote in, "How about a garment steamer instead of the iron?" A garment steamer? Yeah. It, you don't get the pressure from the garment steamer. I think that um, one of the things that happens when that moisture is applied to the front of the cap is that you're you're melting the sizing and the fabric that is in the center seam. And when you've got Correct. that bulk of fabric there, um, for the people that are asking if there are alternatives to the iron, it's the, the moisture, as Joyce said, that is going to break down the, the fibers and make um, embroidering across that seam much more smooth and um, kind of softening up the buckram, as she, as she mentioned as well. So it's a steamer, it's a handheld steamer um, or the, um, you know, the floor model steamers that you have. Is that what you're talking about, Joyce? Yeah, they don't work as well, no. Okay, so what, what do you use? Regular, it's just a regular steam iron, like you're okay, ironing okay. your clothes with. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it's yeah. really just forcing the steam and the moisture yeah. into the cap. That is correct. Okay. Great. Now we've got unique backings that um, are only used for, you know, their particular um, items here that we're talking about. But now we have a towel here. You would not use a wash away on a towel that you are handing out as a gift. Now this is, um, this tear away wash away, what happens is, you know, you tear away the excess and then the rest of it it just washes out as you wash the garment. However, if you are doing a set of towels for a person, they bring it into your shop, they want to give them as a gift, you would not use this wash away backing because you want to be able to uh, tear all of that backing off so you want to use a real crisp tear away. And I use like a medium weight crisp tear away and because I want to remove every bit of that backing for a great presentation when that customer is giving it as a gift. And I do a lot of monogram towels. And if you have a backing that is real crisp, it tears away very easily. And so you don't have that issue. So it's, it's great. Don't forget your topping on top of towels. Absolutely. Very important. Yep. Um, so what you actually would use this product for is say you're doing a dozen towels for yourself or you would be able to wash it away. Um, it does tear away pretty um, fairly cleanly. It leaves a little bit of hair and sometimes you have to get into the small areas. Um, but usually what you want to do is you just want to get rid of most of the excess backing. And within that first wash, maybe two, um, it's going to go away. It really depends on your water conditions. The softer and more conditioned your water is and the more agitation, the quicker it removes. Um, but certainly it would disappear over time. If you're looking for something that's going to wash away completely, go back to your cutaway, wash away backings, and those are going to um, wash away completely. 
just want to interrupt very, very briefly. A couple people have written in asking if they will be able to watch this webinar again. Yes, we are recording it, so you would be able to see the recorded version. You'll also be able to print the individual slides. Um, and also, every question, and we're getting a lot, and because we have so much uh, material to cover, we're not answering as many questions as we normally might. So, um, have no worries. We are collecting every single one of them, and you will receive answers um, in, through email. So, thank you. <laughs> so, here's a couple of products. Um, other um, specialty tearaway backings. So we've broken away again. You know, we just a reminder. We've broken away from the standard backings, um, basic backings. This is a tearaway specialty backing. Um, tear waffle just right. You can see it blown up so that you can actually see the texture of it, and you can see there's little perforations there or holes per se. This is intended for delicate fabrics and designs. I throw up the. Um, the snowflake design over there as an example of what I would consider a delicate design. It's also put on a fairly delicate fabric in that it's a um, it's a real lightly woven fabric. So if you just used a simple basic tearaway backing on this and you went to tear it away, all those um, sticks or um, lines sticking out of the snowflake itself would actually put a lot of stress on the fabric. So you'd start pulling those stitches to the back side and it would actually damage the design. Um, so the Easy Tear Waffle is actually an uh, easily torn away product, also known as pop away because when you do tear it away those little perforations kind of make a pop 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 sound and um, so often you'll see it in the industry called pop away um, for the easy line of backing. It's called Tear Waffle Just Right. A um, great product for the lightweight designs and fabrics so that you're not causing any stress on the design itself. Now we've also got stick on tearaway. Now this has a pressure sensitive adhesive with a release paper on one side and this is used for hard to hoop items and um, and it prevents the hoop burn on fabrics like velour and uh, velvet. And this is commonly used with fast frames. Now I do not use fast frames at all. And what I do is I just take a large hoop that I would normally use for hooping and I hoop the backing very easily. It, it hoops just like a piece of fabric does. And then I score it and so that I can rip away the paper on the top of it and then I place my cuff or my collar on it. I use this a lot for uh, designs on the edge of collars and it also works great on the sides of visors so that there are on these visors that are so hard to hoop. It just it makes it simple. Absolutely. Um, the, the back of the collar there that has Madeira sewn on it and the cuff of the collar were actually just laid flat on the um, the exposed sticky um, backing itself within the frame held itself really nicely there while it was being embroidered. The other thing I like to use this for is um, a lot of times you have border designs so maybe you're adding those on to the edge of a sheet or a curtain. Um, you can actually put the backing on the back side, t take your release paper off, put it on the back side of that edge of the curtain or the edge of the sheet and then you can put a little um, some of the leftover paper, put it back on the exposed sticky side and now you can just simply hoop the, um, the curtain or the bed um, sheet and line up your border and you can actually um, keep stitching along the whole edge of whether it's a curtain or a bed sheet or whatnot and then um, it really it tears away nice and cleanly. It's kind of, I guess it would be a medium tear away backing when it comes to the, the weight of the backing. Um, so it does tear away nice and cleanly when it comes to that. Um, somebody asked if the um, pop away would be great for bed sheets. Um, absolutely. Um, keep in mind when it comes to the tear walk away, I'm sorry, the tear waffle product, it doesn't have a lot of stability. So if you're putting um, nice, light, delicate designs on those bed sheets and absolutely you can use this topping because it's not going to give you a lot of stability throughout the life of the garment. So each time you wash it, you just want to make sure you're using light designs, um, light open airy, nothing with a lot of um, 
dense fill and stuff like that, you want to go to maybe a different backing for that, something a little heavier weight. So we've covered our backings, our basic backings, our specialty backings, and now we're going to move on to the toppings that are uh, the topping that is actually available. Um, Joyce mentioned a couple of times where it was important to use a topping, and here we're showing you some designs uh, with and without the topping. So Easy Aqua Supreme Topping is a water-soluble topping, and it's used to prevent the stitches from sinking down into it. So you have terry toweling here up on the top. You have a heavyweight knit. Um, sweater fabric in the middle, and on the bottom you have a lighter knit fabric. They're all effective because they have a little bit of an extra loft to, to the fabric, so whenever embroidery is done, it's being squished between the bobbin thread that's on the bottom and the top thread that's on the top, and you can clearly see the difference, especially in the middle design, the, um, the flowers there. Um, actually did that quite by mistake when I stitched up the first design on the right, um, let it go and went back to it when it was done. And I'm like, oh, I should have used topping there. I kind of forgot about it. And then sure enough, I stitched it, stitched it out again on that same um, sweater fabric with the topping on it. And sure enough, you can see where you can see little to no gaping. Um, you're not seeing the sweater behind it like you're on the right hand side. And it's also especially good when it comes to the thin lettering. So on the bottom there, you've got a um, a logo on a knit cap that was done and topping was used on the left side and without it on the right side and draw it down. I think that red Z kind of pops up on the left hand side nice clean clear crisp edges are shown there as well as the thin lettering on the rendezvous logo um, letters themselves and you look on the right side you're just seeing it's getting a little lost there on the top you see terry toweling uh, with the, the, again, the thin letters that get lost on the, the right side look real crisp and clean on the left side. Um, but I think more importantly, the, the mountain looking um, design that's above the letters is clear and crisp. Not only is it staying on top, but you see some definition with the different colors that were used there as well. Um, so toppings are real important to use when it comes to lofty material that you're embroidering on. It helps with that, but you can also, you also want to consider it when it comes to the thinner threads. 40 weight is your standard weight thread, whether it's rayon or polyester. Um, everybody's, you know, familiar with that. That's what you use on a regular basis, but you have 60 weight threads out there that are perfect for the corporate logo slogans that are underneath the logos. Very small lettering and um, using the topping along with those threads actually helps it stand up a little bit more. And of course, we've gone a little thinner now. We have a 75 weight thread that's even thinner than the 60 weight thread. So the details that can be achieved with that are perfect um, when you um, come out real crisp and clear when it comes to using the topping as well. Um, somebody asked, is Easy Aqua Supreme um, never used as a backing? Generally, you would not use a water-soluble topping such as this as a backing because it's really not going to hold up well. You could probably use a couple of layers and get some work out of it, but I would recommend if you're looking to use, if you're looking to get rid of it, uh, the backing on the back side, I'd go back to your cut washaways uh, because those disappear nicely. They have a, a lot more stability uh, when it comes to embroidering on them. So. Now, can I talk a little bit about, uh, I should say, now I want to talk a little bit about how to remove the topic because I run into a lot of people that won't use it because it's difficult to remove. And it's only because they don't know how to remove it. And it is very, very simple to do. What I do is I rip off the excess uh, topping after I get through finishing embroidering it and I, I keep it in a little box and each time I just rip it off, stick it in this box and then I make a, I gather a bunch of this up into a ball and I just squeeze it together and then take the wand of my steamer and um, steam it and then keep pressing it and then just keep applying it until I've got a nice hard ball. It's, well, it's not too hard, but yet yeah, it's, um, like a one inch or a two inch ball, it doesn't matter the size, but 
and then I let it I set it aside for a little bit to dry out and then what I do is I will steam off my hoop mark first and then I go over the area that has the embroidery with the wand of the steamer. I, I just hold it over there a little bit. You don't want to put the head of the steamer onto the garment. You hold it above it a little bit and then you take your topping ball and then just press it against the uh, embroidery and it picks every bit of that right out. Even on the teeniest, tiniest letters, it pulls every bit of it right out of the center. And when, you, when you're finished with it, then you can fold your garment up because it's not wet. I mean, some people spray it and you end up with a wet garment that you have to let dry and also it sometimes leaves a sticky residue. But if you'll just make your topping ball and steam it and pick up the topping with the topping ball, it's perfect. It and is. It's much, yeah, it's a much more a uh, professional way to finish off your garment. Absolutely. I actually, uh, we kind of call that the bubble gum technique here. And then one thing that's important to note when you are using this technique is when you're spraying your ball and you're, you're I'm not saying, I'm sorry, it's not spraying, when you're steaming the ball and you're steaming the garments where the topping leftover is, it's really important to give it a half a minute to a minute for the backing to break down. Um, it's water soluble. It's not instantaneously um, going to happen. So give it 30 to 60 seconds for it to start breaking down. Once you take that ball and you start dabbing it like if it's you know bubble gum on your face and you're trying to get it up, it sits there and picks up the smallest little pieces um, inside letters, you know, inside your O's and your D's, um, inside the capital letter A, that little dot. It's going to pick them right out of there. Now, also, you know, speaking of topping, there's times when uh, we were talking about the, the mesh caps. If you have a any kind of a rough textured garment, uh, a cap, a, a tote bag that's made out of this heavy canvas, and anything where your stitches look sparse or uneven, if you'll put topping on it, it will solve that problem. Choice, thank you, and Nancy. Um, <clears throat> at this point, Nancy, <clears throat> sorry, is going to describe uh, the rest of a few backing products that we have left to go, and then Joyce is going to review some mistakes that were made and how they could have been avoided. Um, okay, so here we have Badge Master. This is a heavyweight water soluble backing. It's not a topping, much heavier than your water soluble topping. Um, it's actually used for backing, and you can use this much like your cutaway wash away for standalone lace. So that's probably its most common use uh, for the product. And simply you hoop this product just like the cutaway wash away, embroider a standalone lace design on it, trim the excess, dump it in water, and it's going to dissipate right away. You can actually leave a little bit more of it on. Um, don't rinse it all out. You can actually shape things with it as well. So that's an advantage of the Badge Master. Why did they call it Badge Master? Well, it was actually originally introduced to embroider badges and patches. So you can, again, hoop it, um, use your blank twill patches, and you can embroider a badge on top of that twill and finish it off with a nice satin stitch. Again, get rid of the as much excess as you can with it. Um, you will have to put it in water to dissolve the backing, um, the Badge Master. But there you have a beautiful um, uh, standalone badge. Here are a couple of backing finishers that are available. Um, so we talked about these at the beginning on the list, and these you actually put on the back side of finished embroidery. So great for, um, perfect for infant and children's wear. Very often if you buy infant wear with embroidery, you look on the back side and you see this white material, sometimes it comes in black. This is what is put on the back side of those um, manufacturers. You have the ability to buy this when you're embroidering and add it to the back side of your embroidery. So if you're doing infants and children's wear, I highly recommend that you use either one of these products here um, if you're embroidering with metallic thread. And that's going to be one against the skin. Again, I would use this on the back side because sometimes on the back side, the ends of the metallic threads can be a little bit itchy. Um, so either one of them are going to prevent irritation to the skin. 
for sure for anybody with sensitive skin. The Comfort Just Right has a real silky feel to it. It's soft and sheer and it's available in the white only. Um, however, when it comes to the Easy Web Long No Show Fusible, much like the Easy Web Long No Show backing, um, it's very similar or it is essentially the same product. It just has a um, heat activated adhesive on the back side. So you cut it the shape of whatever you're covering. I use, I simply place it um, the correct side down, trace it, trim it out, put it back on, and I use a heat press or an iron to adhere it on. Um, there's um, instructions for both products when it comes to that. The difference with the Weblon No Show product is you can actually use this as a fusible stabilizer as well. This one is available in white and black, so if you're using um, trying to cover up the back side of a dark garment, um, you have the black back um, finisher that you can use for that. Well, we've reviewed many, many different types of backings here today and with the description of how and when to use them. Now, let's take a look at some of the common errors that are made when choosing the backing and how to avoid them. Always remember that cutaway will always require the extra step of cutting it away once the embroidery is finished. And high volume production companies very often choose a tearaway backing in order to maximize their production time. But that choice may be at the expense of the final result of your embroidered items. Be careful to not be attracted to the ease of a tearaway when it is not appropriate for the fabric, the design, or the thread. And do not select a backing based on price. This could be very, very costly to you. If, it, if you do not use a high quality backing, it will show up after a few washings, and then you will have a very unhappy customer, and this could cost you a repeat customer. Now here, a tearaway backing was used on both of these designs, the ones at the top. Now they are knit fabrics, and it resulted in puckering and poor registration. Now the same two designs were sewn at the bottom here with the cutaway fabric, and they stitched out beautiful, and will support the design throughout the entire life of the garment. Remember that the results of a poor choice of backing may not show up to your client until the garment is laundered or dry cleaned. Now in this example, this is another poor choice. This was a tearaway was used on this and this was a, um, a piquet knit. And again, the result is puckering and poor registration. The proper use of the cutaway and the one on the right to do a beautiful stitch job. On a design like this, on cotton or piquet or any other textured knit, I would recommend two layers of the no-show backing and one layer of a crisp tearaway. Don't forget your topping. It's very, very important. Now the extra layer of the crisp tearaway will help the small lettering stay crisp and sharp. Remember, poor choices in using the, uh, the wrong backing may result in a bad design. But most, most important, it can result in the loss of repeat business and positive word of mouth advertising. Now you wanted to know what the badge effect was? Here it is. The one on the left is a very poor choice. It has two layers of the heavy cutaway used on it. And the one on the right was a single layer of Weblon no-show. However, I would recommend two layers of the no-show backing. And if you have small lettering and the fine detail, as in the previous example, I would add a single layer of the crisp tearaway as well. Now, this the tearaway holds the stitching flat and keeps it from pulling in and puckering. Okay, um, we are at the, at the lower end of our hour with you now. 
Um, and certainly when it comes to backing and topping, I think we've, we've shared with you that there's a lot to remember and a lot of choices out there. Um, in order to, to help give you some tips and, and tricks and, and allow you to keep them right at your fingertips, uh, another area to find instruction sheets um, is on our website. Uh, you'll find backing information sheets like the ones that are illustrated here right on our website. Uh, we will send a link to that uh, exactly where you'll find them when we send you the Q&A. Um, there is so much to remember and Nancy and Joyce have shared so much information that again I just want to reassure everybody that all of the questions um, that we've collected and there have been a lot will be going out to you as well as links to the um, to the charts that everybody's mentioned. And speaking of charts, here's one that Nancy put together. Um, so this is actually just a backing chart of the products that are available for you. Um, breaking them down into the cutaway and the tearaway side and also a basic cutaway, a basic tearaway versus a specialty cutaway and a specialty tearaway. Um, we, we've given you all that information in the presentation here. That presentation is going to be available to you um, for you to reference back. However, this is just a nice, neat list. I think that puts them into buckets, so it helps you separate, you know, what, what is it? Um, in addition to the backing, you've got your easy aqua supreme topping, uh, water-soluble topping, and also at the end, you've got your backing finishes that we talked about. So it's just a nice list, a chart that um, is going to help you at a glance be able to see what's available for you. And that's available in the handout, on, in your handouts, in your dashboard, and also we'll have links to this in the email that we send you when we follow up. Um, so somebody asked about uh, recommendations for starting out when it comes to backing, so that's a great question. Uh, we anticipated that and put a couple of bundles together for you. Um, so the top one there is a, bank, um, sorry, a basic backing bundle, so you have a lightweight, a medium weight cutaway, you have a heavyweight tearaway. Those are your basic backings that would be great to have on hand, so if you're looking for something, um, to purchase from us, we've got a nice deal here for you where you'll save some money buying all three of those at, at once using that item number there. A specialty backing bundle for those of you that may hit, maybe you're a little more um, looking, you're, you're, you've got your basic backings under hand, um, but you're looking to add some specialty backings. Here's a bundle for you. Um, what you're going to get here is you're going to get that Weblon no-show product um, for your performance wear garments, stretchy, and things like that. You've got your cap tearaway roll, 150 yards of that, and a water-soluble topping pre-cuts as well. Looking to add that, we put that together at a special price for you as well. Order that item number there. Um, this information is in the handout that's going to be, um, that you can download right now on the side. And um, hope those um, work well for you. Um, someone just asked that these prices on the backing were for wholesale customers only, but that's not the case um, with our easy backing and topping division. Those top, those special prices are for everyone, wholesale or retail. Um, and for people that would like to order their own backing, maybe they have their favorite, they, they're short on inventory on a particular um, weight, uh, we have another special that offers you 10% off of an order, any size order, as long as it includes one item that is from um, backing or topping. We also have a, a special here that Joyce is extending to you. Um, her book is um, available on Amazon and it's called The Truth About Embroidery Business Success. Uh, it sells for $19.99 on Amazon and it is yours for $7 uh, for a limited time. Um, it's a 120 page downloadable ebook, so you might want to take advantage of that as well. Uh, Joyce has an upcoming webinar tomorrow on Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, you'll be sent um, part of your email. We'll have a link to register for that. Madeira's next webinar will be on embroidering on performance wear. I saw a lot of questions regarding that come through today. So um, again, watch your emails because our next one will be so solely about performance wear. Um, thank you so much to Joyce for sharing her time and expertise with us today. Uh, we hope we've... Oh, sorry. It was my pleasure. Thank you. 
Um, we hope we've eased the decision factor a little bit for you and made some tips and tricks available. Again, all the questions with all the answers will be sent to you. So if we weren't able to answer your question within the hour, you will receive an answer. You'll be getting two emails from us, one today um, or tomorrow and the latest Friday, um, thanking you for your um, attendance and listing these specials so that you'll have all the details in front of you, the links to everything we mentioned. Thank you so much for your time today and good luck in your backing and topping choices.